Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. as you come on in. Good morning, God bless you.
Good morning, good morning, everyone. If you know me, you know I love Minister Dunson Oyakon, and I will listen to this the entire morning and pull it right up. <laughs> oh my God, but I believe that God wants to minister to us from his word this morning. And as we have just listened to this powerful song, yeah, may we stay. May we stay in purpose. May we stay until we're endued with power and may we wait upon the lord because our strength will indeed be renewed good morning everyone good morning facebook good morning youtube thank you for joining me this morning let us pray father we bless you we give you all the praise we give you all the glory we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your faithfulness we thank you for all that you have done we thank you for yet another morning to encounter you another morning to pray another morning to lift up the holy one of israel continue to have your way in our lives continue to move over us let your will be established in jesus mighty name amen and amen good morning again everyone and God bless you and thank you for joining me this fabulous Wednesday morning. Amen. It's good to be alive and it's good to seek the Lord early. Amen. So I want to talk to you a little bit about waiting. Hence the song. Context clue. <laughs> hence the song. I want to talk to you a little bit about waiting. And the reason why I want to talk to you about waiting because no matter where we're at in life, there's a time that we have to wait on God. So it doesn't matter if you're in a, a uphill season or a downhill season. Once you're continuing with the Lord, there will be a time or a season rather you will have to wait on him. And in the waiting, it can get frustrating. That rhymes. <laughs> In the waiting, it can get frustrating. In the waiting, you can be tired. You can be weary. In the waiting, you can be angry. You know, you can be upset. You can be worried. The time of waiting, it, it's unexpected because you don't know how things are going to pan out. You don't know what, what's going to happen. And it can be an uncomfortable place. And the truth be told, it's a place where a lot of believers walk away from God. It's a place where individuals throw in the towel and say, I've been waiting for this time. I've been waiting for this to change. And nothing is happening. And it's the time where persons decide, I just can't bother with God and I can't bother with church. But I want you to know that in our seasons of waiting, it should not destroy us. It should not deplete us. It should actually strengthen us. Because in the waiting, we're not sitting and just looking. In the waiting, you should be sitting and believing. Right? So you're waiting, but you're just not waiting with a wait. <laughs> you're not waiting and worrying but you're waiting and there's an expectation for a change. There's an expectation for a shift. There's an expectation for transformation. And that makes the difference in waiting. Although I'm here and I'm at this place and I'm at 
this level i believe that something is going to happen i believe that something is on the other side of this so that's your expectation it's not just you look looking and you're digging out your hand middle and you say boy but they are no me away but me not me not me real me not know what go on no that's not how you wait you should be waiting that that should not be your posture while waiting on god there is a passage of scripture that i want to share it comes from psalm 27 reading 13 to 14 i believe that i shall look upon the goodness of the lord in the land of the living this is the esv version for the lord all right let me go back here so it says i believe that i shall look upon the goodness of the lord in the land of the living verse 14 says wait for the lord be strong and let your heart take courage wait for the lord this this passage of scripture I want to highlight because of the first part of it. Verse 13, I believe, I want you to follow me, I believe, that's fate right there. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then it goes to say, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage, wait for the Lord. So although you, you're waiting, you should be engaged where your faith is concerned. I'm waiting, but I'm waiting with expectation. I'm waiting, but I'm waiting, and I'm believing that there's a manifestation that's coming. I'm waiting, but I believe that there is a shift that's coming. I'm waiting, I but I believe that there is a deliverance that's, that's coming. You can't be waiting and you don't have no expectation because they say, you know, I'm just there. But I believe I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that something is shifting. Ada Brunda Bagazanda. I believe that something is changing. I believe that I will be healed. I believe that I will be delivered. I believe that this situation will turn around. I believe that there will be healing in the lives of individuals that I'm connected to. I believe that a new job is coming. I believe that my finances are going to be shifted. I believe that I am going to grow in the will and the plans of God. I believe so while you're waiting you're waiting with expectation I believe that this is not going to be my final destination I believe that my family is going to walk in newness I believe that I shall break generational curses I believe that my business will break forth I believe that my purpose my destiny it will break forth you are waiting but you're believing you're waiting but there is an expectation that you have you're waiting but you know that something is going to shift and something is going to happen and this is the importance of declaring the word of god because in seasons of waiting there there is doubt the enemy uses doubt to come and to bombard your mind and to tell you that it's not going to go this way it's not going to happen this way so while you're waiting the word of God should be in your mouth while you're waiting you should be uttering scripture this is what God has said irrespective of me being in this season there is a change that's coming why what I am experiencing now is not the picture that God gave me oh da 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 what I am experiencing now is not the prophecy that God gave me what I am experiencing no is not the word it is not the word of the Lord so that means my where I'm at no it's not the complete picture of what God promised me so there is more there has to be more because he is not a man that he should lie so you're waiting but you're believing and as I said earlier, this is the place many people tap out. I'm no longer here. I'm no longer present because I'm not seeing anything. But while you're waiting, faith has to be there. While you're waiting, faith has to be intact. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me not read that one. Let me go to James 1 verse 5. So in your periods of waiting, you have to have wisdom. Why do you have to have wisdom while waiting? I mean, we need wisdom all around, but in your periods of waiting, it's important for you to seek God concerning wisdom. And as I said, we are all waiting for something. No matter where you're at, you are waiting for something. And 
it's important to seek God for wisdom in these times. Why? The enemy comes when you're vulnerable. The enemy comes when you have a level of expectation and you're not seeing it. And you're seeing everything else but what God, God promised. And doubt will begin to settle in. Fear will begin to settle in. And this is why we need wisdom. And, uh, you know, we've heard it in terms of, of, you know, seek wisdom. But what is really wisdom? Wisdom is truth applied to specific situation, situations for a godly outcome, a godly end. It's a skill of seeing beyond the thin surface of how things appear. So you will be in a season where you're waiting on God and then the enemy comes and brings something in your life and you say, oh my God. Oh my God, this is what I've been waiting for for so long, right? But it's not really God. The Bible talks about him appearing as an angel of light. He comes in camouflage. He comes as if this is God when it's really not. So in your seasons of waiting, you have to have wisdom to know, is this God or if, is this the enemy? We see wisdom being applied when Solomon was king. The, the ladies with the baby, one took away the lady baby saying it's her baby. And Solomon was like, all right, let's kill the baby. And the one that it was truly her child, she said, no. It's okay. Let her have the baby. And Solomon said, it's your baby. <laughs> it's your baby because once it's your child, you wouldn't want that child to die and no one gets the child. You want that child to live. So there was a level of wisdom and the other lady was like, okay, yeah, let's kill the baby and, and split the baby. And Solomon was like, this is not your child. If this, is, this was your child, you would not want this child to die. That is wisdom. That is wisdom. Wisdom causes you to see beyond the surface. Wisdom causes you to see beyond what is natural. And sadly, some people are waiting. And because of the absence of wisdom, they end up picking the wrong thing and doing the wrong thing. Although they were waiting so long. Be although they were waiting for that extensive time, they ended up doing the wrong thing. Connecting to the wrong people, making the wrong decisions because of, 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 because of the absence of wisdom. And they were waiting so long. Listen to me, we need wisdom. We need wisdom because your wait can be in vain if you don't have wisdom. Someone comes and it looks like it, as if it's God. An opportunity comes and it looks as if it is God. We need wisdom. James 1 5 says, If any of you lack, lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously to all who, to all without repro reproach, and it will be given him. So God wants to give you wisdom. God wants to release wisdom upon you because you need wisdom for decision making. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. They were able to discern the times and the seasons. That, that was wisdom. Knowing when is the time for what. When you have wisdom. When you're in a particular season. No one can push you out of that season. Or you come out of that season prematurely. Because you have information. Right? You have information that this is what God is doing in you. This is the season that you're in. And you're staying put. Wisdom is information being applied correctly. So you have insight concerning what God wants and you're applying that information that you have. So it's important for us to flow in wisdom because if we don't have wisdom, we will miss God. We will miss what he wants to accomplish in our lives. I, I feel God. We will miss what he wants to do in our lives. And sadly, many people have missed God because of the absence of wisdom. You have not applied what he has said. And then the enemy comes and play all sort of trickery and give you all sort of a Nancy story. And you begin to feed in to what the enemy is doing. But God wants us to have wisdom. I want to read this passage of scripture. It comes to us from Proverbs 9 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is, big, is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So the fear of the Lord 
is the beginning of wisdom. When you reverence God, when you have that fear for God, that awe for God, you ultimately want the will of God. You want God to flow in your life the way how he originally designed your life to be. You want his will, you want his plans, you want his counsel, you want his instructions, his directions, you want the perfect will of God. And when you begin to fear God, you're open to wisdom. When you begin to fear God, wisdom begins to flow. And we see it in the life of a prostitute in the Bible. The Bible talks about Rahab. And Rahab applied wisdom. She had wisdom. So she had wisdom because she had a fear for God. And when the spies came in the land, she hid the spies right she hid the spies irrespective of what could have happened to her because she could have gotten in some serious trouble herself and her family but because she feared god she flowed in wisdom and she flowed in wisdom and saved herself and save her family because she knew that God was going to give the children of Israel the land. She heard about their God and she took the opportunity to cover them and give them information that was necessary concerning Jericho. I want you to know when there is a fear and reverence for God, God will begin to minister to you on a greater dimension, in a great, on a greater dimension. God will begin to speak to your heart, speak to your heart. He begins to lead you into truth truth but a lot of times individuals it's it's not it's not a fear of the lord they are there i'm waiting you know and if this thing don't happen i'm just gonna move away if this thing don't happen i'm just gonna run if this thing don't happen i'm just gonna backslide if god don't work this out this is the end of it no you have to have a fear for the lord so although i'm waiting and waiting can seem frustrating i have a fear for god where am I going to go? Where can I run from his presence? Where can I run from purpose? Where can I run from that which he has called me? He's the creator of the universe, emperor of the universe. Where am I running to? Where, where can I run and hide from God? When I can hide from man and I can change state and I can change country and I can change location, where can I run and God doesn't find me? nowhere so when there is a fear for god although the weight is a weight you begin to say i am not moving where am i going where am i running to what's going to happen to me when i run so that that all of, all of, all of those things begin to play in your mind because there is a fear for god listen to me enough time i want to run <laughs> enough time i want to run but where am I going? Girl, where are you going? Are you going to be like Jonah? Are you going to be like Jonah? Think you can run from God. Think you can run from God. God will trouble the very thing that you're, you're doing. He ran. Went in a boat. All of a sudden, a storm. Jonah knew that I am the one that is causing this. Where am I going? Where, how, how can I run from the king of the universe. How can I run from the one that laid the foundation of the earth? I might as well stay. I'll, and while I'm waiting, I ask for grace. While I'm waiting, I ask for discernment. While I'm waiting, I ask for wisdom. While I'm waiting, I allow him to endure me. With power from on high. There's a song by Pastor Travis Green. It's while I'm waiting, I'm getting stronger. My fate is rising and I will run. Oh, while I'm waiting, I'm lifting, I'm lifting up as wings as eagles. I will wait, I will not be moved. Oh. So you're waiting. And you're getting stronger. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. In the waiting, there is revelation. In the waiting, you're receiving information.
In the waiting, you are getting stronger. In order da da ba koraba zanda da baha. In the waiting, you are building muscles. In the waiting, you are building patience. Because the truth is, some of us were impatient. We've been like that from we were in the world. And we come into God. And God is trying to kill that. God is trying to kill how impatient you are. Because some of us, we are not accustomed to waiting on anybody. If we ask people to get it done and they don't get it done, we go get it done ourselves. We go figure it out ourselves. We do what we have to do to survive. But when it comes on to walking on this kingdom road, you have to be patient because God's timing is not your timing. God's timing is not your timing. So God will cause you to take a bench, have a seat. And while you're waiting, he's changing some things in you. While you're waiting, he's shifting your mindset. While you're waiting, he's pulling some, some things off of you that will hinder purpose and hinder destiny. Because truth be told, if we get everything that we want in the moments that we want, it will be disastrous. I always look at my relationship with God from a parental relationship, right? With a, a father and a daughter. I'm a parent. And when I think about withholding some things from my children, I'll withhold it because it's not time for it. I'll withhold it because they are not at the place to handle it. So my, 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 my daughter will ask, Mommy, can I get a phone? No, you're not ready for a phone. What do you mean? You know, all my friends have phone and they carry phone to school. No, you're not ready for a phone. I remember when I had a phone as a child and I had it too early. I got it too early and I was exposed to things that I should not be exposed to. So wisdom will say, no, you're not getting that phone. When you are at a different age, I will give you that phone, right? But she's looking at the situation that everybody else has a phone and why can't I have a phone? And I'm, I'm, I'm the villain. I'm Grinch. I'm Grinch because the Grinch that stole, stole Christmas. I'm the Grinch because I don't want to give her the phone. And sometimes we look at God like that. God, oh, you stay so. Oh, why are you treating me like that? Everybody else have a car. Everybody else has a house. And I'm here. And this is not happening for me. Why, 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 why? And we're looking at everybody else. And we're saying, so God, what happened to me? But I want you to know that God knows exactly what he's doing with you. He knows exactly why he has you in a waiting period. And we have to look at it from that parental relationship. We have to look at it from that aspect. Because some of the things that we want, we shouldn't be getting it right now. And uh, to be totally honest, I'm, I thank God for some things that I asked for that he did not give me when I asked for it. It would have destroyed me. I thank God he did not give me the freedom to do some of the things that I wanted to do. Because it would have destroyed me. So as I come out of that period, that, that waiting phase, and see God do some things in my life, I'm like, okay, this is why you had me waiting. This is what you were changing. And this is what you were preparing me for. This is what you were blessing me for. All right, let me, let me, let me say this. Everyone wants financial stab stability. Everyone wants financial freedom. But truth be told, the million dollar that you want <laughs> by later or this morning, where you're at financially, and when I say financially, the way how you handle money, you will lose that million dollar by next week. Yeah. You will lose. How do you lose a million dollar? You give it to someone that does not have any financial restraint. That's how you lose a million dollar by next week. You give it to someone that does not have any financial discipline. You give it to someone that wants to splurge and wants house, car, land. That can't buy your land still. House can't buy your house neither. 
um yeah jamaican million dollar but you give it to someone and they go splurge and they buy all the latest appliance and guess what after they buy all of that and the house is full of all these new things guess what they broke because you didn't flip any other money right you didn't flip any other money you didn't invest any other money so all you had was that and when you spent it there is nothing more sweetie mm. so god has to restrain us financially as well he has to teach us financially as well and one of the ways he teach it he teach us he teaches us concerning our finances and being better stewards of our finance finances is through giving is through tithing when you hold on to the principle of tithing and you learn to honor god with a percentage of what he gives you it's easy to put away a percentage for saving because you have been doing it with god you have been honoring god you've been consistent where tithing is concerned so it's easier where saving where you should be saving is concerned as well so it's principle so in our waiting periods there are some things that he's trying to teach us some of you that's waiting for a husband some of you that's waiting for a wife in this period he's trying to allow you to learn yourself learn how you are and also he's trying to change you because if you should get the husband or get the wife where you're at you will destroy the marriage it will be short-lived all that excitement for one year and then divorce and somebody might be saying the devil is a liar change <laughs> change transform allow him to work on you where you're at oh god everybody's getting married god my wedding finger is scratching me oh listen to me put some olive oil on it put some olive oil on it make it stop scratch you and <laughs> learn the lessons that god is trying to teach you in this season allow him to work on you your weight is not in vain he's doing something in the waiting he's doing something while you're waiting on him He's doing something while you are waiting for that partner and you're waiting for that next. The wait is not a wait. The wait brings transformation and the wait brings deliverance. So I, I want to liberate somebody this morning. I can't deal with this anymore. And if I don't get married, married by next month, I'm going to do it. What are you going to do? You better sit down and wait on the Lord. You better sit down and wait on the Lord. And this is where wisdom comes in play. Why am I waiting? What is God trying to, to teach me? What is God trying to do in me? What is God trying to shift in me? What is God try, trying to change in me? Because the wait is not in, in vain. What is he trying to, to, to allow me to learn? So we have to get to that place where we're not just bombarded because we don't have this and we don't have that, right? So let me give you an example. My first vehicle, I wanted my first vehicle to be a van and God, I want a van and I want, I want a big vehicle, right? But God, God, let me, me hold a little, a little sit down and say, hold this because you're not you're not ready you're not ready you're not ready for that and let me let me tell you god works on us in stages he, god works on us in stages he there's a scripture that talks about ruler over little and then you become master over many ruler over many he starts in stages and he allows us to manage the little and that reflects how we will manage the plenty the mega sometimes you want to skip the little skip the little and just give me the plenty but truth in fact you don't know how to manage the little where you're at now you're not a good steward over where you're at you're not a good steward over your time you're not a good steward over over um your finances you're not a good steward over your your profession you, you're not you're not diligent and we're asking for this big opportunity let me give you an example some persons are asking for promotion you're asking for, for promotion but where you're at they have up your boss have a problem with you you're always late you want promotion you're always late and you're not managing the workload you're not managing your time effectively but you want a higher position 
Sometimes we don't want to talk about these things as believers. Sometimes we don't want to, to address these things. But these things are, are some of the very reason why we don't step in another dimension. So where you're at, you, you're not managing well, right? You're not, you're not up, to, up to par with the task. Task for the day, you're not up to par with everything that is required of you. But I need a promotion. I need a next level. And you have not even mastered where you're at. God delights in the small stages. How are you managing what, what you have now? How are you managing where you're at now? How are you stewarding, stewarding this, this season of your life? How are you stewarding what he has given access to you, given access, um, you access to right now? How are you managing that? Because that will play over in the major. So, you are not going to automatically just manage the major. You are going to manage the major because you were used to the little. And you were stewarding the little. So when the major comes, it doesn't get to your head and you start splurge and you start doing what you're not supposed to do. But because you were very diligent with the little, you are correctly managing the mega. Right? It's a principle. So I want, I want, I want to say this because I feel it. Individuals, God, what happened to me? What should I be learning in this season? What should I be learning in this, this season? What should I be invested in in this season? What should I be connected to in this season? Who should I be connected to in this season? What should I be doing in this season with my task? What should I be mastering in this season? Because whatever you don't master will master you. Whatever you don't master will master you when you think about women sometimes we are a little bit lippy in marriage right and we come into marriage come into marriage and we're still lippy because when we were single we didn't master that and your mode getting a whole lot of marital problems your mode getting a whole lot of marital issues and you know we'll be like oh did we get here you got here because when you were single that didn't change about you so what happened is it, it's amplified in marriage. It's mega in, man, in, in marriage because it wasn't handled, dealt with. You didn't change that from when you were single. So anything that we don't deal with will master us. You might not see it now, but in the future, you will see it in your relationships. You will see it in, in your, your new jobs. You realize that this was a problem that was prolonged. This is not new. This has been something that I've been struggling with for quite some time. But it ended up mastering me because I didn't grab a hold of it. So I want you guys to know, listen to me, that there are things that the Lord is trying to teach you while you're waiting. There's, there's things that he's trying to change about you while you're waiting. So ask him. What should I be doing now? What should I be changing now? A lot of times, singles, I don't know why I'm talking about singles this morning, you know, but hey, <laughs> I hear you, God. A lot of times, singles are just focused on marriage and I just want to be engaged and I just want boo or boo boo to come. You know, I just, I just need to be married. But what should you be learning in this phase? What should you be doing in this phase? You shouldn't just be sitting and waiting for that person to come. No, you should be occupied. You should be working on yourself. You should be making more financial, better financial decisions. You should be working on your relationship with God, right? You should be invested in your relationship with God. You should be growing. You should be occupying. You should be doing purpose. So when that husband or that wife finds you, they find, they find you in God. They don't find you outside of God. They find you in God. They find you working in the vineyard. How did Boaz find Ruth? Ruth was in the vineyard. She was in the field. Yeah, that's a whole nother sermon. She was in the field. He saw her in the field. So that's, that's something to pull from. That is something to pull from. We should be occupied. We should be working. 
right? We should be invested. We should be invested. And it's not you just sitting and looking for the next person to come. No. Allow God to work on you, where you're at, and what he's doing in you. And may you receive wisdom. Wisdom concerning decision making. I feel someone, you are about to make a decision that will cause your purpose. You are about to make a decision that will cause your destiny. I pray that the Lord ministers to you. I pray that you receive wisdom. I pray that the Lord will overshadow you with his truth. And you will not make decisions that are outside of God. You will not make decisions based on what you are experiencing currently or what you see. But may you be aligned with what God wants for your life and everything that he wants to accomplish, accomplish through you in the name of Jesus. Yeah, that da 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 ba za ba da ha. He's going to minister to you. He's going to minister to you. Let me say this. You need wisdom even concerning where you should live. Some persons get up and they run, go overseas. And I mean, I understand the challenges that we're having in Jamaica. But as believers, we have to know what God is saying. I, I shared this testimony that after, after college... I was able to stay in America and the Lord said to me come home and people said that's not wise why are you coming home to Jamaica nothing is in Jamaica but that was God's wisdom God wanted me to come home so we'll make decisions that that look good and it feels right but it's actually not God and this is why we need wisdom I was I was called to Jamaica I was sent to Jamaica because there was purpose. I mean, I wouldn't be doing ministry. I wouldn't have met my husband. You know, maybe I would have backslide because at the time I, I was regressing. And me coming to Jamaica saved me spiritually. So wisdom is pushing to hear what God is saying. Not my opinion, not man's opinion, but what God wants to accomplish through me, the direction that he wants for, you, for my life. So you have to hear God. What is it he's saying concerning a relationship? Is this your husband? Is this your wife? The truth is sometimes, and it, it happens a lot, people run and they get married. Christians, they run and they get married. And when it get tough, guess what them say? Boy, I mean, me never really did hear God know. <laughs> Me, 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 me marriage now work out and you know say me never really did get no confirmation you know me just say he that find it a wife find it a good thing and we just we just married <laughs> we you have to hear god you have to hear god concerning marriage listen decisions that will alter your life i beg you believers hear what the lord is saying Decisions that will alter your life, where you go to school, who you marry, the church you go, where you live, your, your profession. All these things are, all these, these, these different things, they are, they are decisions that will alter the course of your life. So you have to hear God. You have to hear what God is saying. Think about Esther. Esther got counsel from Mordecai that she should not reveal her nationality, where she came from. And she listened. She listened to him and didn't say, say anything. So the person that was instrumental in saving the Jews was in the palace. And the people didn't know. Haman made a declaration against the very queen that was in the palace. Because she hid who she was and because she hid her nationality that was vital in the redemption that the children of israel needed so that was wisdom some of us i shared it on sunday some of us we don't take counsel we don't want to hear anything from anybody i know what i need to do and i and i don't want any counsel and this is what i'm going to do the bible calls you a fool 
The Bible calls you a fool when you despise wisdom, when you despise information, when you are unable to pull from individuals that have gone before you and you decide that I am going to do my own thing, right? She took counsel and that was wisdom. What Mordecai told her was wisdom and it was vital for the freedom of the people. It was vital for the children of Israel, for the Jews. So as a result of that, she would have experienced and the people of God would have experienced deliverance from that which Haman wanted for them. We see it in the life of Abigail and her husband. How her husband just talk anything. It's not wisdom when you talk anything that comes to your mouth. Anything that comes to your head, you talk it. Some of you like, oh, I need scripture. It's fine. I'm going to give you scriptures. Right? Let me, let me, let me go to the scriptures. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, we have to have wisdom in even the way how we have conversations. Let me find this passage of scripture. Let's go here. Proverbs 14, 16. One who is wise is cautious and turns away from evil, but a fool is reckless and careless. This other scripture, Proverbs 15, verse 2. The tongue of the wise commands knowledge but the mouths of the fool pour out folly you meet somebody that just talking 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 you just volunteering information it says the tongue of the wise commands knowledge but the mouths of the fool pour, pour out folly so when you are going to flow in wisdom there's a level of secrecy that you need to flow in you don't say anything everything some persons they announce things before it even they even give birth birth to it they announce things before it even is established no keep it build it right you don't have to announce things things before the time that cause that ex, that causes it to be exposed prematurely and individuals are able to hinder it because what you released it so wisdom is necessary for decision making and the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis abigail and her husband he just spoke anything and as a result of that he was about to get a whooping right he was about to get a whooping from david david and his men and abigail through wisdom intercepted and brought the the different food food items to david and his his men and as a result of that they were her household was delivered because david was going to to deal with them the bible said that he was going to take salvation in his own hands some of us we expose ourselves to additional warfare because we talk too much we expose ourselves to additional warfare because we expose things that should be concealed things that you should have in the womb of prayer and you're praying it forth and you're fasting concerning it you know you're allowing god to 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 use you to to build it and you're nurturing it you expose it before it reaches anywhere so wisdom is so important and i remember i don't think it's this year i think it was last year last year the lord challenged me concerning wisdom and i would have seen throughout the year different things that would happen why he was telling me that i should have wisdom yeah the start of the year he kept on saying pursue wisdom and i saw why wisdom me applying wisdom in different situations was necessary else it would have gone south so we need wisdom for decision making we need wisdom for for purpose and we have to flow in that because the absence of that, we will go against the will of God and lean onto our own understanding and do things that we think is right. And it's really going against the plan of God. My prayer for you 
this morning is that you will flow in wisdom. You will hear the voice of God concerning different situations. You will hear the voice of God concerning purpose. You will hear the voice of God concerning destiny. And you will be aligned with his will. You will be aligned with what he is doing in your life in this season. You will not miss God because you leaned on your own understanding. You will not miss God because you pursued something else. You will not miss God because you thought that this was right, so you ran after it. After it, No, you will be connected to what God is doing and you will hear the voice of God and you will flow in the will of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I hear all that brand that I hear the Holy Spirit ministering to some people. I hear him talking to some individuals and telling them, do this, do that. Listen to the voice of God. He's giving you wisdom, right? He's giving you wisdom because the absence of that, you will do your own thing. The Bible said there's a way that seems right to a man, but at the end of it, there is destruction so lean into what he's saying lean into what he's doing and i hope allow the holy spirit to lead you in jesus name all right ladies and gentlemen this is where we're gonna end today listen i want you guys to jump on next week wednesday next week wednesday morning we're praying for families so i want you guys to share the link with your family wake up your family we're gonna declare the word of the lord over families and i'm gonna be praying prophesying and just allowing God to do what he needs to do. The Lord spoke to us regarding this year that it's a year for families. It's a year where he wants families to be saved. It's a year where he wants to restore families. It's a year where he wants to break generational curses of families, right? So next week, Wednesday, grab your family member, wake up your grandmother, wake up your grandfather, wake up your auntie, your uncle, and join me next week, Wednesday morning as we are going to be praying and declaring the word of the Lord and believing God for families to be restored and family members to be saved. Yeah, they need to be saved. We're going to be praying for them for next week, Wednesday. So make a note of that, believers. Also, Woman Stay Loose Conference is coming up. <laughs> it's coming up. The information is on my Facebook page. And it is www.spuropen.com slash WSL24 to register. We are going to be in Florida the 13th of July. And we are going to be in Jamaica the 4th to the 6th of July. So you can register. We have day passes. For those that can't make the entire conference, you can purchase your access pass for one day. That is online or in person. And we have the access pass for three days where it's discounted. So if you're going to pay daily, you're going to pay more money. That's for Jamaica. It is 4,000 Jamaican. Yeah, 4,000 Jamaican for... We are going to have about five sessions. So three different days. It's going to be extremely powerful. So you'll get a discounted rate when you purchase your access pass for the three days those that are online that information is there for us to join us online those that are overseas as well and if you are going to meet us in florida don't worry i'll be releasing the location that we are going to be in florida in short order and that registration is free same www.spuropen.com slash wsl24 and you are able to register to be a part of Woman Stay Loose, Florida. It's free, but you have to be registered to enter. So we need your registration information. Amen? Amen. Join us this Friday night. We have a night of worship, right? We have a night of worship at LOTGI this Friday night at 7 p.m. Come out and let's worship the King together. And join us tonight at LO Light of the Gentiles International Facebook and YouTube page for Bible study. Yes. All right. God bless you guys. Love you. If you are not following me, following me, if you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can go over and do that at Prophetess Sarah Smith. Yeah. <laughs> bless you guys. Have a great day. Love you guys and shalom.